Hi, we are at lesson four on our Python for Anxious Artists series. In this video, we will be talking about part two on variables where we will introduce to you some conversion between different variable types. And we will also introduce you to some string basics. Once again, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for your incredible support for this channel as well as the entire Python for Anxious Artists series as I've been producing more of this content. And I just really want to thank everyone who has been subscribing and hitting that notification bell and just really supporting the work that I'm doing out here. If this is your first time watching this series, I'll include the link to the playlist in the description below. Remember to check it out for all the other videos in this series. Naming of variables. So there is an entire coding style guide called PEP8 that helps keep Python code easily readable across the community. Check it out if you want to know more, I will include a link to it in the description below, or you can just Google PEP8. Most Python code adheres to what is sometimes called the snake case naming convention for variables and functions. Variable and function names should be lowercase with words separated by underscores as necessary to improve readability. It's considered best practice and strongly recommended to use this style in new Python code that you write. And it's not very different from common guidelines in the industry that we have for how to lay out your nuke files, or your Houdini networks, or color coding conventions. So Pepe is the style that I will be introducing to you throughout this series. Finally, remember that code is read more often than it is written. So it is more important to write code that is easy to read than code that is fast to write. In this example, I look at a common gotcha between integer and float, as well as how to convert between the different data types. So let's go ahead. Emily age, and I know Emily is 21 years old. Now I'm going to create another variable called Don and this will be Don's age. Now I know Don is half of Emily's age. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make use of my variable Emily age. So I'm going to tell the computer, hey, retrieve Emily's age in that variable and divide it by two. The problem here is Emily's age is an integer and I divide it by two. So let's verify that Emily's age is an integer. And yes, it is an integer. So what's going to happen now to John's age? Is it 21 divided by 2 is 10.5? Is it going to give me a float? Or is it going to give me an integer? Well, let's see. It's actually going to give me a float. So if you made an assumption that all ages are going to be integers, then you might be in for a surprise when you perform an operation like dividing an integer by two that you get a float. And we can verify that that's the case by just printing out Don's age. And yes, it's 10.5. So Python is going to automatically or dynamically create the most appropriate variable type for us depending on the results of the operations that we perform on these variables. Another thing I introduced to you is another inbuilt function called the print. And this print function lets us tell the computer to display the contents of a variable onto the screen. Now I don't want Don's age to have decimals. So let's go ahead and convert it to an integer. We can convert Don's age to an integer by saying don h equals to one more time I'm going to create int function and so I'm going to pass the variable don h into the integer function which will convert it into an integer and then assign it back into don h variable so let's see if we are successful at this first let's print don h It is 10. And then let's go ahead and check the type. And it is an integer. Now note how the integer function 
will simply drop the decimal value. It does not round up or round down. We can also convert numbers into strings. So if I were to do don age equals to str stir don age. Now if I print don age, I get 10. If I said type don age, it's actually a string. And that's all at the moment there is to dealing with numbers for now. So in previous lessons, we have been acquainted with strings just a little bit. And strings are simply a sequence of characters. I'm going to show you three ways we can define a string. The first way we can define a string is to use single quotes. Say some string. Let's print some string. The second way we can define a string is to use double quotes. Another string. Print. Let's go ahead and hit the up arrow key and that will actually bring back previous commands. It's a nifty little trick. And let's modify that to print string B. Another string. So why have single quotes or double quotes? You can use either. But sometimes when you want to include a single quote within your string or a double quote within your strings, it's convenient to have the option to use one or the other. Here's what I mean. If I wanted to have single quotes within my value in my string like this, I could easily use double quotes. Let's print that and I get single quotes easily. This works the same the other way around, so vice versa. The final way I can declare, define a string is to use triple quotes. And triple quotes is interesting, so let's do this. Some other, and I'll hit enter for new line, four spaces, followed by the word string and triple quotes enter now let's print string c and the result of string c is some other a new line followed by four spaces and then the word string so it retains any formatting that you have within the triple quotes so that can be useful uh, at times when you need something to retain just the exact way you want it formatted. Strings cannot be changed in place after they are created. So if you want to get fancy, the term is called immutable. Technically, integers and floats are also immutable, but you know, it matters less for them. Data types that can be changed after creating them are called mutable. And there are other types of mutable data that I will mention in future lessons. But anyway, regarding strings, that just means you can't directly manipulate strings. But I will show you how simple it is to deal with this in later examples. So how to join two strings together? We can join two strings together by simply using the plus operator. Hit enter. The result of it is anxious and artist together. If you wanted to have a space in between, you would remember to include a space in one of the strings. So that catches me very often as a beginner. If you want to impress or just enjoy a tongue twister, this concept of joining strings is also called string concatenation. Concatenating a string or how to concatenate strings. Since strings are immutable or cannot be changed after creation, what we're essentially doing here is creating a new string by combining two separate strings. So numbers can be strings too. For example, if I were to have an integer of one 
in double quotes, which makes it a string. Let's see what type does it return. It actually returns a string type. Similarly, we can do 1.0, which technically is a float. Because I put it in double quotes or single quotes, it becomes a string. The string type is often abbreviated simply as str. Let's see what else we can do with strings. How about repeating a string multiple times? We can print the string 1917. Love the movie, by the way. Five times. Hit enter, and it prints 1917 space five times. How about deriving the length of a string? Well, we can derive the length of a string like, say, this famous movie quote. By using a function called a len. You can think of len as the short for length because that's really what it is. It returns you the length of the string which in this case is 26. This string is 26 characters long, including the period at the end. Hey guys, if you're getting value from this video, remember to hit the like button. Question of the day, how do you motivate yourself to learn? Write them in the comments below. I look forward to hearing your responses.